Welcome everyone, welcome to another preview. This is Metal Canyon and we'll be previewing a game by Point Blank Games called Shock Tactics. Oh, was I really excited about this. When I first saw it, I immediately put it on my follow list on Steam and before you knew it, the developer actually contacted me and offered me a key. Now, I should have done this days ago, but I was simply swamped with work, unfortunately, otherwise I would have... Um, gotten this preview out to you on the day of release. Anyway, Shock Tactics. It's like an XCOM game. It's an XCOM-like game, I should have said. And uh, let me just click continue over here so we start loading. And, um, I mean, how much more excited can you be? The, screenshot, uh, the screenshots looked great. Some of the stuff I already seen, some of the videos were uh, pretty uh, interesting. You know, it's like an XCOM squad-based, turn-based, tactical ba uh, game with uh, with uh, base building, and how much more awesome can you get? And why is this so loud? I thought I put it. Hmm. Oh, let's put it like it's seventy. All right. So, how much more awesome can you get? I was so excited about this game, but oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. There are so many things, unfortunately, wrong with this game. I don't even know where to begin. I, I, I wanted to love this game. I gave it a chance so many times. This is one of the reasons I haven't done a preview sooner as well. Uh, because when I did have time, I started up the game all excited. And then I, I just I played for half an hour and I couldn't do it anymore. So it was over several days, I started up the game, sometimes more than once per day, and I wanted to give it another chance. And it simply, unfortunately, disappointed me every time I played it. That's the bottom line. Now you can probably just stop uh, watching the video here, or you can just see what the game is all about. Anyway, this is our base. The story is, we're on a planet, on an alien planet, and honestly... I don't know much about the story because it's so weird and convoluted. It's not really convoluted as much. Um, th there's this obelisk we, we came to take, and this is where we set up our base to, to study the obelisk. But the game doesn't tell you anything about why we're studying this obelisk. Okay, because it has strange energies, but why have we come here searching for this? Why are there so many weird people wanting to kill us? And so on and so forth. Anyway, let's leave that uh, alone for a moment. Let's just concentrate on the base building. I love base building in these games. You can see we've got our arsenal, we've got a landing pad, training center, and a tech core, uh, tech forge. And as you can see, it's a, it's a lot. It's very inspired by XCOM One and Two, for example, the the new ones um, with their base building, because you can you know you can see your buildings and the people doing stuff in them. Now, of course, just like in the previous in the in XCOM games, you know the games that I'm going to be referencing a whole lot here. Um, you know, the soldiers are just, I don't know, just there, doing stuff. I don't even think that it's your soldiers, no, because there's too many of them. But these guys are having a party. Anyway, like in XCOM, these buildings serve a purpose. The arsenal has your soldiers, which look pretty nice. Um, I have already equipped the uh, new armor I've made for them, so they don't die as easily. But the one thing that probably, you know jumps out at you, or maybe it doesn't, I don't know, but it's the UI. It just feels a bit alpha-ish. It might seem okay here, but what I've seen in some of the older videos was a lot more freshed out. So anyway, let's go to the Tech Forge, for example. This is the Tech Forge, this is where you make new stuff. This is the enhanced combat armor I've made. Now, each each of these things requires some sort of input, like credits and strange alloys, compounds and stuff like that. Now, these icons... Usually I have to, you know, hover over them to remember what they are. I know strange alloys, but these channeling artifacts, reaction artifacts. So anyway, uh, we've also got some weapons here. Uh, but obviously you need to research these. Or actually, let me take that back. You don't really research stuff as much as you go to the tech forge, I think. No, wait, where do you go? I can't remember. No, I think you just get the things. Now, you go to base construction, see, this is, 
You go to base construction, and this is where you build stuff for your base. You go to Tech Forge, and if I upgrade my Tech Forge, I will unlock the next artifact, enhanced armor, and weapons. That's it. There's no research involved. That's done by Cap, the, the uh, story's main character, which also, by the way, is one of the squad members, I believe. So anyway, the only way to proceed to the next tech level is to build stuff, or uh, to build the next level of the tech forge. But of course I need credits for that, I need more energy, which means I need to increase my generator level here. And for all of that, of course, you need more of these strange compounds, alloys, and so on and so forth. How do you get those? Well, obviously through missions. Let's go to the world map. Now this is... This is where this game does stuff right, for example. Now, this looks very much like, I don't know, perhaps a civilization game, or perhaps a uh, Heroes of Might and Magic. And it's quite interesting. I like the look of it. It looks graphically quite pleasing. Uh, the icons look good. You know, it doesn't look alpha as the UI does. Um, and what you do here, pretty much, is you have your base, and then your little rover, and every square it has to move through is one day. Now we're on day 59 and the IC, which is the Imperial Consortium, I think, arrives in 81 turns. I have no idea what happens then because I haven't played that much. Uh, but I, I guess it's a bad day. Your base gets attacked or something. I don't know. Anyway, now the whole purpose of having your rover go about the map is to uncover the areas you haven't un uncovered yet and to uncover these mission areas. Now, unfortunately, I was quite excited about this. I thought that, you know, there would be like cool story missions or like special areas and stuff like that. But most of the stuff is just... The IC attacked our excavation site. If we want artifacts, we have to take it back now. Oh, look. The IC attacked our excavation site. What about the drop? Oh, pirates are planning to attack our excavation site. The IC attacked our excavation site. Uh, towers. The IC attacked our excavation site. <laughs> you know, it's like, who the hell is this IC and why do they want so much? You know, I, I was kind of hoping that, oh, if you if you take this area, if you secure this area, we would get this. And you do still, you know, for this one, we'll get 2,000 credits, 100 uh, strange ally and so on and so forth. So these aren't really areas which will you will establish a base in and they will continually give you resources. No, they, they give you just the instant reward when you complete the mission. Now, my main problem with this is this difficulty slider. Or it's not really a slider, it's a bar. Oh, it's an alien. Oh yeah, these are the aliens. That's uh, that's one of the coolest uh, features about this game. There's, there's alien creatures because it's obviously an alien planet. We'll get into more of that later. Now, the difficulty thing. I usually just do missions with one or perhaps two difficulty because anything more seems to be a massacre because of one big flaw the mission uh, how the missions are designed let's 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 try this one let's start the excavation operation so we get the um, rover there and then the dropship will fly there and drop off our uh, soldiers over here now here's the problem some of a lot of the maps are created with enormous open spaces where there is no cover now you might say, okay, so it's just much more dangerous because both the enemy and your squad <clears throat> are on the same footing, you know, no one has cover, so you just have to kill each other quickly. Nope, that's not how it works. How it works is that you get no cover and they can hit you from pretty much the other side of the map if they have snipers. I have no idea how that works, but it does. Now, I'm not going to just be criticizing this game, I'll also tell you that it does quite a few things right. For example, if you remember in XCOM, you can probably already, you know, know, you already know what this is. This is where you're running and you can still shoot, and this is dashing where you can't. Now, however, the nice thing about this is that the game actually uses action points, as you can see. Uh, we'll get to the UI just in a moment. Uh, so, for example, you know, in, in XCOM 1 and 2, you could move over here, and then shoot or move again, but that was it. You had two actions, that was it. Or if you shot, that was it. Uh, here, however, you can use action points however much you like. Uh, 
Uh, of course, when you shoot, that's it. You can only shoot once and only if you move within the green area. So if I move over here, I can still shoot. However, I don't have that guy in my line of sight. Now, that's probably another thing you've uh, noticed. The line of sight uh, indicator. Now, that's really cool. I really enjoy that. Many times in XCOM 1 and 2, you wouldn't know exactly if you would get a sight on a target you wanted to kill so for example maybe if i go here will i have sight on that one well we can obviously see we won't so if i were to walk here or here i would get line of sight of course that means they would get line of sight as well now let me just move my uh, characters now here's the uh, overwatch we'll, which we'll we'll be using you all know what Overwatch does. Uh, I'm going to move you, not here because that's not cover. Now the game also uses half cover and full cover, or as they say, good cover and bad cover. Uh, let's put you on that. Let's get you into cover. Now, <clears throat> let's just, let's just um, look at the UI just for a moment. What does this scream to you? Look at these big square buttons, no colors sort of basic design all this stuff here it, it just screams alpha to me i don't know what they were thinking whether they really want to get to go for simplicity or something but this is just not good enough it looks ugly it looks also when i started playing this game i was confused you know why can't i click on any of these abilities it was only afterwards i noticed that see the items you i mean the skills you cannot use is slightly grayish in color than the ones you can and these ones if you hover over them they actually turn blue so that's another weird design decision and also come on the, the icons are just boring make them look nicer look at xcom how it how it did that so anyway the the cool thing about uh the percentages here is that unlike in XCOM, if you have an 11% chance and you say, ah, I'm not gonna hit, you know, in my dreams, over here, every bullet actually has that percentage. So if we shoot five bullets, which I believe these uh, rifles do, every bullet will have an 11% chance to hit. So I probably won't hit anything, but let's try anyway. There we go. We got one lucky shot there. So we took one health of their shield. So that's a cool, you know, that's a cool thing. I can, uh, I can say that. That's pretty awesome. Uh, because it was pretty infuriating to have a huge minigun in uh, XCOM shoot, shoot some alien and miss everything just because you, you didn't do that 69% chance. Uh, you didn't have luck. Let's move you here. You're too far away to hit anything. So 8% and 1%. Now this is something you'll see a lot in this game. Uh, this is These are my main problems. The snipers. If you've noticed... Where is our sniper? I can't select him now. Okay, I'll show you the next turn. Anyway, let's, let's move the rest of the people. Let's have you on maybe Overwatch. And let's have you move... Uh, somewhere. I don't know where... Uh, well, I gotta get you in cover. Um, let's get you there for now. And also do Overwatch. There. Now, the, uh, enemies. There we go, Overwatch triggered. That wasn't too bad. Overwatch triggered. Didn't hit anything. Now, the camera does like to move about a lot very fast. Now, for some reason, it didn't show me what kind of a hit percentage they had on me. Usually, it tells you that. Not bad, 48%. That was actually a nice shot. Took all of the shield out and some of his health. And didn't hit anything there with 1% per bullet. So, well, this guy has moved back and forth, and now he's doing a instant kill attack. I'm not kidding you. That's an instant kill attack. If I do not break line of sight with this guy, he will kill me in the next turn. Now... Let me just put this into perspective. The enemy snipers... Actually, let me select my own sniper. There it is. Now, you might have noticed this little bar here above the weapons. Now, this is pretty cool. It tells you what kind of a hit percentage penalty you will have for shooting at close range. Because the sniper rifle obviously is a bit unwieldy at close ranges. And it doesn't really fare well. So, 50%... At point blank range, well, minus 49%. So if you move out, move out, move out. So there we go. This 
Come on. This, there we go. This is the optimal range. So, quite far away, right? So you'd think that he would be very good at hitting the, um, this guy. Oh, wait. 1%. Why the bloody hell do we have 1%? Is it because of height? Is it because of the, uh, the cover? Now, these guys aren't complete rookies anymore. They're like level 3 or something. So, here's the problem. My sniper, in most cases, is quite useless. Unless the people are out in the open. Look, this guy is out in the open. I only have 68% chance to hit him. Now, fortunately, there is a skill called Aim Shot, which is available every turn and increases your shots by 20%. So, that's pretty good. I can live with that. Let's do that. The main problem is... The enemy snipers, for some reason, have much more range and, m and, in a lot of cases, more accuracy. But the range is the biggest problem. My sniper is supposed to be a sniper, yet he will not be able to hit. I, I don't even know how he's able to hit this guy, because he's so far away. In most cases, he will not be able to hit uh, enemies at ranges where he's actually, you know, good at. There's no squad site, as far as I know. Unless there's some kind of a weird squad site later on in the levels. But you have to train the soldiers for that. So that is quite infuriating in most cases. Anyway, let's uh, move up Mavuta Bunker Berwin. Still 1%. Brilliant. Now the problem is, because this guy is up here, we have to get up there right next to him pretty much to have a good shot at him. If I do that... There's about, I kid you not, like six, seven units over here, including a leader, which increases their um, stats if they're next to him. So we've got a 34% here. Let's try that anyway. Probably should do an overwatch. No, that was actually really good. Now this guy needs to get it. No, that's not the guy. Uh, this guy is going, I don't know, there. That's not dashing, so that's good. Oh, also, please note the shield icons. You remember in XCOM, right, where you had a shield icon, a full shield icon, that meant that you had full cover, or in this case, good cover. If you have a half one, you have half cover, or in this case, bad cover in this game. However, can someone explain to me all the bloody colors that are going on? The red shield, I understand, that's an enemy. Yellow shield, does that mean he's flanked? Remember that from XCOM? So why did this, why does my guy have... Oh, that's because he's selected. Okay, I only get that now. See, that's another one of my problems. Flanking doesn't really seem to be a thing in this game unless it's the enemy doing it. I kid you not. I might be just really bad, but bloody hell, I've played a lot of XCOM games and such, and I never had this problem. Um, when If I were to be able to run over here, by the way, I kid you not, I would have like... 60% maybe to hit this guy from here. If he were to move here and I was, I don't know, here, he would definitely hit me and probably kill me. So I have no idea how flanking works. It might be just a bug they need to sort out, but it's quite infuriating in a lot of cases. Let's put this guy on Overwatch. Uh, now we have, oh yeah, I completely forgot about this guy up here. That's not good. Oh yeah, one cool thing, one thing I really appreciate with the mechanics here in this game is, remember how in XCOM you moved somewhere with a dash, for example, and oops, suddenly there's an enemy there, and you were, well, shit out of luck, pretty much. Well, not in this game. The soldier immediately stops when he spots another enemy that isn't visible to anyone else yet. So that's pretty cool. So you, can, you still have time to recover. So for example, if I... Wait a second. Oh, okay. It doesn't work on this guy because he was already uncovered before. Okay. But if this guy was invisible to us for the entirety of time so far, he would have stopped like here because he spotted him. So let me just try and kill this guy here. Nice. Because that was 95%. He had 5 health and uh, we had 5 bullets. But this is another thing. See, it's all these little lines here for some reason. I don't know why they added them because, any I mean, people have 1, 2, 3, 4... Four and a half? What? I don't I don't even know how much health this guy has. It should tell me somewhere, but and see this is a different bar altogether again. The orange stuff is armor, but I have no idea how the health works. I don't know. 
It's just the UI really needs some work. See, this guy is normal. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wait a second. I take it back. This guy has six health, and this guy has like 24 or something. Yeah, yeah. I take it back. Okay. But still, the UI needs work. So, if I were to move here, we'd still get killed. If I move here, we'll be fine because now it's gray and the guy doesn't have line of sight on us anymore. So, poof. That goes out in a cloud of smoke. And Overwatch triggered. Come on. Kill him. So, let's talk about the AI. Ow, see? I don't know how he managed to hit us so well there. We have a 25% chance, apparently, to hit him. But he was able to do quite a bit of damage. Let's see. 38. Okay. And he had, what, 45%? Now, let's talk about the AI. The AI is fairly abysmal in this game. Now, I never... You know, I never pretended it was very good in XCOM or anything. Let's move over here. See, now I should be able to flank him. Okay. Right, okay, this wouldn't be a flank in uh, XCOM either, because uh, he has cover to this side. But still, 52 here? Come on. It's annoying. Now anyway, uh, the AI, I don't know. Sometimes, usually, it just stands there and shoots you. A lot of the times, it'll run out of cover towards you in a suicide attempt just to spite you and kill one of your soldiers and then, you know, die themselves because, well, there's nothing they can do there out in the open. Um, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's not very good. And the most infuriating thing about that are the missions where you have to... Oh yeah, nice thing, if you press R, it gets rid of the uh, roofs. Uh... If you press... I'm sorry, if uh, if you have a mission where you have to um, save prisoners, the problem is the enemy starts out... Oh yeah, there's another path over here I didn't notice. It's probably what we should take. The enemy starts out um, by attacking prisoners, by having a skirmish with them. Now see, this is my sniper here. 1%. Uh, oh my god, uh, why... So, what happens is, you have to run through this entire map. For example, if it was a, you know, if this was an escort map, the prisoners would be somewhere over here, fighting a bunch of enemies. Now, we would have to go all the way through this map, fighting enemies to get there, all the while the prisoners, albeit armed, usually just ignore the enemy and don't do anything, despite the fact that we spook the enemy units, they run out of cover, towards the prisoners and would be easily shot and flanked by the prisoners, but they don't do that. It's just infuriating in, in you know, situations like that. Anyway, so now, if I run up here, I am so screwed, but I'll show you anyway. There we go, boom. Two enemies over there. There you go. Now the, uh, now my soldier has stopped because he spotted them, so that's nice. We can react to that. I really do appreciate that. Look at that, 65, 94 finally. So there's an enemy here and two enemies over there. I'm going to kill this guy. And I'm going to get my other soldier. Soldiers, oh, excuse me. Soldiers over there. Uh, no, there was one more thing I wanted to say. What was it? I can't quite remember. Oh yeah, let's go into cover over here. The thing is, we'll probably get flanked by that guy. I don't know how, but we probably will. And get shot up. Now, also another thing, you might have noticed that... Look, I move all the way that I can. Yeah, the game still says that I have a sliver of AP left, so I have to click end the turn for the soldier. It's a little bit annoying, but... Oh well, nothing that can't get patched out. It's just the major stuff that, you know, pisses me off. Because, and it pisses me off for one reason. The graphics, while not amazing, look quite nice in a way. Ow, 14%. Um, you know, they, they look quite nice. And this game has potential. But it just needs such a huge amount of polish. This, ne this game needs another six months at least. Or a year in development. Um... There are no, you know, character sounds, there are no voices that, that should have been there, because it just feels empty. I like, you know, clicking on my soldier, having them move, and then going, Yes, sir! Or, you know, going like, I'm under fire! And stuff like that. You know, it just adds to the whole thing. It's nice. But there's nothing like that here, unfortunately.
Now, if I move my soldier over here, there's no telling when one of these soldiers will move here and flank me for some reason, or even those guys were flanking me. I don't know how it works. Maybe it was patched out, maybe that was a problem before, but um, you also have various, um, you know, abilities like this one. I don't know why I can't hit these guys. I can only hit in the horizontal. Oops. No, 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 I didn't... I clicked cancel. I mean, I clicked resume and he just shot. What the frig was that? Oh, dear. Okay, so let's move over here. Let's try to kill something. Uh, also, oh, yeah, this is the aim shot. Right, let's try that. Also, one of the soldiers... I think it's Cap. Let's see. Is it Cap? No, that's not Cap. Who's Cap? I thought Cap came on the missions, but I guess he didn't. Now, this guy has the... Uh, no, Mark Target. Who has the honor thing? No, that's the aimed shot. No, this guy has the honor. Grants 20% aim bonus for each enemy in direct line of sight. Lasts for one turn. Check it out. It, the cooldown is once per mission. It sucks. It's like, oh dear, I need a boost in accuracy because my soldiers are crappy as it is by, in, you know, hitting targets. There we go. And uh, you only get it once per turn. And how is this a 20% increase? This wasn't a 20% increase. There we go, that wasn't too bad, but it wasn't good either. Um, so, it just pisses me off. This game could have been really good, I think. But they rushed it. They rushed it. You can see that on the U uh, UI. There is no way... Um, you know, this was finished. In their minds. No way. Uh, so this is 14%. See? So now my only option is to either fight it out here, or somehow run, out, uh, run over to this cover, or go all the way around over here, and try to fight them from here, which would probably be a much better option. But, you know, there's... I don't know. I like the fact that the game doesn't, you know, hold your hand all the time and give you cover everywhere. But this is also ridiculous. This is a tactical squad-based game where the enemy, most of the time, for some reason, has much more range than you do, and will shoot you up if you're out in the open. In fact, I have a feeling that the AI cheats somewhat and actually knows where your soldiers are. So if you go out, out into cover, suddenly enemy soldiers will, will appear and they will shoot you. And there's the enemy leader, by the way. And, um, you know, they, they give you almost no cover whatsoever. It, it doesn't work like that. It's not gonna work. Right, so my only option really is to... Well, this is half cover. They'll just annihilate me there, but let's try it anyway. Uh, maybe not. 31%, let's try that. So how do we have, on high ground, have such poor accuracy here that we can't shoot anything? Now remember, if I was to go over here, or, you know, well actually, they see me from there, but these guys would definitely jump on the uh, chance to shoot me there when I'm flanked, even though I can't really seem to flank them. Now, as I said, take my critique with a grain of salt because I haven't played the game a lot simply because of the fact that it was so frustrating and just unfortunately not very good. Um, your mileage may vary if, uh, if you're a bit uh, masochistic. But uh, yeah, unfortunately I cannot really recommend this game to you. Uh, it has its moments Sometimes it, it shines and actually here's the perfect here's the perfect case in point for this game Let me tell you a story about my last mission. I did before I I made this video It was a pirate mission where I had to find and kill a pirate leader uh, It was a Fairly large look, look at this look at this how much damage they're doing to me from that range 53% seriously so anyway, and th look at also the number of enemies. You might say this is my own problem for pushing up, but I just wanted to show you what happens when you screw up like this. Uh, so I was trying, I was trying to find this pirate leader. Now the problem was it was a big map, and I had to fight through a bunch of pirates on the way. Before I could find the pirate uh, boss, which of course 
was at the very end of the map. Now, there was a couple problems. One, as I said, a lot of enemies. Two, uh, there were enemy reinforcements coming in, in like eight turns or something, which meant that I had to hurry. But I couldn't hurry because they would shoot me up. So I get to the pirate boss and he spawns with huge armor, a huge comical tank cannon on his back. I don't even have percentages on these anymore for some reason. Uh, and he starts shooting up my people. But it's okay, you know, it's a fair fight. I, I managed to take him out with um, quite a bit of damage done to myself. Um, however... <laughs> Here's the really crazy thing. Uh, let's go for 16%. Just... I don't know who was... No, that was the other guy. Uh, now, here's the crazy part. All this time, the clock is ticking for the uh, reinforcements that are coming. And I finally kill the pirate boss, and I think to myself, Phew, that's gonna be it, right? Uh, but no, we have to get to the evac point. So I think to myself, all right, it's fine. I'll manage to kill the reinforcement somehow. The dropship drops right behind me pretty much because it, it showed me where it would drop. And it drops, I kid you not, six pirates. Six pirates. And don't forget that when I killed the pirate boss, one of his henchmen, I think a sniper, was still alive. So I, I, was, I either had to kill the sniper and be flanked by uh, all the pirates, or, um, you know, or um, take care of... Let me just move over here, actually. Or take care of the reinforcements and be flanked by the sniper. It was insane. Now, here comes the really cool part. I hope you're still with me. So I've got this one pirate and the six pirates as reinforcements. I know I'm not doing this right, but I just can't be arsed anymore because there's so many. Uh, <laughs> I, tr I desperately try to fight them all. Let me move here, see what happens. I think he'll be flanked. I desperately try to fight them all, and suddenly I notice that over here in the mission objectives, it says, you know, where that enemy reinforcements incoming timer was. Suddenly I have four more timers. And each one says, like, four turns, three turns, two turns, one turn. And I was like, what? That's weird. Probably some kind of a bug now that they've spawned, you know? But no, it was not a bug. Pretty much every turn, another dropship arrived in a different part of the map with six more units. <laughs> so, let's do the math, shall we? That's four dropships with six soldiers each. That's 24 soldiers versus my five soldiers which are already pretty low on health how the bloody blithering hell are you supposed to do that i have no idea and see all these guys are now perfectly hitting my guy that's flanked over there let's flank this guy and kill it so this game is more frustrating and more unfinished than it is fun and that is the final stroke unfortunately i cannot recommend it to you you can uh these guys don't die by the way you uh, you have a few turns to get to them and use the um stabilize and warp out so if you do that they're fine but of course you have to get there so anyway shock tactics more shocking than tactics really unfortunately i was really looking forward to this game i wanted to love it but I simply cannot. It needs a lot, a lot, a lot more patching, a lot more balancing, and a lot more polishing. And I kind of doubt that's going to happen. I mean, the developer has already started patching the game, but it's just a small, tiny patch to get some of the bugs out. This game needs a major overhaul otherwise. So, there we go. Unfortunately, a bit of a disappointment, but that's how it is. Shock Tactics from Point Blank Games. This was Metal Canyon. Hope you've enjoyed the preview and my ranting. Sorry about that. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.